So I'm Heather Evans. I'm with Troop 8021 in Bakersfield. I am a level leader for our troop this year, and this is my first year with Girl Scouts, so, and my first presentation for council. So you can do it too. Anybody can do it. <laughs> um, so usually, in my experience, we start our meetings with the Girl Scout Promise. And I have that here for anybody because I don't have it memorized either. Hopefully everybody can see that. So if you'll raise your right hand and follow along with the promise. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the good God. I just run right through that. <laughs> Maybe the delay too. Okay, now let's see if this takes me to my next slide. Okay, so you are all here to learn about making sit-upons. And we are recording this, so hopefully it will be shared on the council's um, YouTube. If not, you can email me um, at the end and I can share my slides with you because I do have some uh, shopping lists that you can use to um, get your supplies together. So what is a sit-upon? There are many different types of sit-upons. Um, I have a preference personally, which I will show you here today, but basically it's anything that will keep um, your bottoms dry when you're sitting on the ground um, and it leaves the space cleaner and then it's something that can travel along. They come in all shapes and sizes, um, and you don't just have, traditionally they're using, using them for camping. Um, if you see the picture in the middle, it's like a bucket type. The girls can put their shoes inside to keep them dry when you're uh, camping overnight or, you know, clothing can be stored in there. Um, but there's also like a shopping bag type style, just you know, we may be meeting in an outdoor arena this fall season, so if you're meeting in a park, you can bring along a sit-upon um, to kind of organize your girls. Um, and we used ours during cookie season as a place to sit during boothing to take a little break, have a little snack. So uh, what type is best for your troop? You know, I know some groups have little girls, some have bigger girls, that some have a combination of of um, all levels um, and there is some skill in it so if you want to get something that's easier for little hands that you're working on tactile functions or um, or something that can just be done in one sitting or not taking too long then we have some options for you so the bucket type is what I prefer but I was finding in my research this, you can run up costs really fast with it um, because you need bucket, you need tape, you need adhesive and things like that, but they are great for storage. You can customize them, you know, however the girl desires to. Um, they can be a little labor intensive, especially if you have a very type A personality that all the lines have to be perfectly straight and all the angles need to be right. Um, I am not one of those people. <laughs> um, there are people that can become frustrated with it. And then again, the cost, you know, a roll of duct tape, the decorative type can be about five to seven dollars depending on where it is. So if your troop funds are going to cover that, you have to take in account how many girls you have how much tape you're going to need, how many options are you going to give them. Um, so materials that you would need for bucket type, you need the drum. With that five gallon drum, you can get them from Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I, have, I have one from both and I'll tell you I prefer the Home Depot ones better because the lid is sturdier and it's thicker. Whereas the Lowe's version, it's a little more flimsy. You can see that a little bit there. It doesn't snap on as satisfyingly. Sorry, I have a grandfather clock. <laughs> That's going to chime six times because it's six o'clock. <laughs> see if I can make it go back. Anyway, um, 
but the bucket itself is pretty standard. Let's just enjoy my grandfather clock for a second. This was my mother-in-law's grandfather clock that we inherited, so it's a great reminder of her every time the hour chimes. <laughs> um, Size-wise, the Lowe's and Home Depot ones are exactly the same. Um, Lowe's was $5, and I believe the Home Depot one was 7 and you do have to pay separately for the lid. Um, an alternative to buying it is become friends with your school cafeteria lady because they receive food in large quantities in these kind of buckets and it may take a little bit of time to accumulate, but then it's free. I don't know what the lid situation would be for the food um, containers, but that's an option of, you know, being a Girl Scout is using resources wisely and rehabbing or recycling products. And I don't know what they do with them anyway at school. So that could be a good way to recycle. Um, so another thing that you, Heather, if, you don't, if you don't mind, I'm sorry. No, um, just because but you're on it right now, um, as far as the trip getting them, what we did was write a letter to Lowe's asking for them. Oh, so yeah. Lowe's will honor any letters also. Sorry about that. I didn't want to jump nope, in. Just totally, that yeah, yeah, totally cool. Um, and that is something I didn't know because, you know, as, as an agency, sometimes um, when you ask for donations, I don't know that it's troop specific or do you have to go through council or that I'm not, I'm not familiar with yet. Um, but usually those businesses are really kind about donations too. So um, moving on to uh, customize your bucket. Um, duct tape is the easiest. I have two rolls here and these these were like I think like six dollars and you don't get like a full fat roll of, of tape with these decorative ones and they do have solids pretty much everything. Um, you do have to go online and Walmart does have them too. I think I got this one at Walmart, but I ordered the zebra online. Um, but like I said, it can be a bit pricey. And this was like for one bucket, basically took the whole roll of tape. Like I went to do another layer and I was already on the white um, holder of it. So it would almost be like one per girl on that. Um, you could also do contact paper, which I did at the bottom here. So contact paper has a little bit of sticky to it, but you could take it off too. And then the girls could, you know, cut out construction paper or magazines, do a collage on the side of it, and then just cover it with this contact paper. And that can even go over the duct tape itself as, as something to customize it with. Uh, maybe troop name or initials, something like that. Um, they do also have vinyl stickers. Um, if you have a Cricut, this is your, this would be your forte because then you could put, you know, troop numbers or even shapes probably. Um, but uh, Amazon has really cute vinyl stickers. These I've got are a nature themed um, pack. So it has animals, it has just like, you know, pictures of globes or cameras. Uh, you, some may get a little inappropriate, you know, depending on grade, you know, age or something like this one, let's get high. Maybe, you know, pull that one out. <laughs> but it's elevation, so it's to your interpretation as well. And I've seen ones that have not age appropriate thing. So, you know, I would just pull those out before you let the girls go, you know, hog wild with them. Um, another thing that you need is a 10 inch round cardboard cutout. You can buy these pre-cut, they would be cake boards, like what you would put a, a baking cake under. Uh, I just cut mine out of cardboard that I got from Amazon because I have a bad Amazon addiction. So I get boxes all day long, <laughs> but it is a little labor intensive where you have to go and trace it out, exacto knife, maybe some scissors to clean up the edges. The 10 inch didn't fit as well here. I had some excess on the Lowe's lid, but the 10 inch had a nice seat 
inside the Home Depot lid. So something to consider. Um, filling material. This also can be what you can acquire. I've seen foam, like dense, almost like egg crate material. Um, I've seen carpet padding that's, you know, smushed together. I used fiber fill, which is a bulk bag of, foam, of um, fiber filling that you would use for like stuffed animals if you're hand making them. Um, and I didn't way particularly. I have a picture in a little bit of how much I put in there. Um, then you also, for a cover, would need 16 inches of fabric. This could be fabric from Joann's. They have a really great clearance section that has like the salvage ends, like a foot long, um, and you could probably get two or three out of those ends, but 16 inches would be a good um, amount to cover. Staple gun is optional um, to secure it, and I'll show you how I secured it in a little bit. And then adhesive, which would be E6000, which is a high, uh, a very strong um, industrial glue. It does have a, a scent to it, so if you have girls that are sensitive to scent, then that wouldn't be a good choice, but hot glue, we all love that. And then um, spray adhesive is also an alternative. So layering your tape can be either direction, but I do, I do mine vertically because I can get the lines a little straighter. Um, or if you go horizontally, just because of geometry, a, per, a circle isn't perfect on these things. Um, so you could see at the bottom, I did have a little bit of a gap. Um, so that, you know, just have to be careful. I think when you're putting tape on, it would be, if you have little girls and you're doing this, put two people on it, maybe like an older girl and a younger girl, or if we still need a social distance, this could be a good mommy and me project, you know, coming back together and then mom can help daughter with their um, bucket. And then I have a picture of what uh, the contact paper would be like. And you, you can put this over your tape or just directly onto the bucket if you don't wanna go with the duct tape option. So I just cut out of construction paper laid over that contact paper and I was able to peel it back up and stick it back down numerous times to reposition or get out the little bumps um, on those on that contact paper and you could use like uh, like a credit card to really smooth it out if you're really particular if your girls are really particular on on getting it really flat so creating the lid um, you're going to have your 10 inch cardboard on top, put your fluff in between. That wasn't enough. It was pretty skinny. So if you want a really plump bottom to sit on, you, I would add like three more handfuls of fluff to that pile that I have pictured there. And then this one I stapled and it's pretty secure, but um, duct tape could also be used to secure those corners and those edge pieces. And then what you would do is flip it back around and put adhesive on the lid itself in the middle and along the edge to secure it to the top of your, your lid there. Okay, and then we wanna customize it. So we can tell, you know, if you guys all have the same colors or just to add more detail on it using vinyl stickers. You can even get really custom custom if you don't have access to a Cricut. Um, Etsy has a lot of professionals on there that you could do um, like Bobby's um, little Bitmoji girl troop, you know, have them create that and then put on your, on a sticker for you. Um, also, I thought collecting stickers from troop outings, like if you went camping at Pismo and you went to a gift shop and got like a Pismo bumper sticker, that would be a cute way to personalize it and have a memory. Um, for personally, I would avoid putting the girls' names on it um, just for privacy purposes. If you guys are out and about, you don't want strangers saying, look, there's Maddie. Hey, Maddie, you know, that you want to keep that 
uh, anonymity a little bit. So this is a chance where you can create a camp name. Um, and this is a name that they use. It could be Sunshine. You know, at, at camp, I'm called Sunshine. That way you can't Google me or Facebook stalk me or Instagram or TikTok me. <laughs> Um, so another alternative to a sit upon would be upcycling old jeans. This could be um, incorporated into badge work because you would have to sew that bottom portion of the legs. Um, but the disadvantage of this is that it's not waterproof. So this wouldn't be really um, good for camping experiences, but maybe for when you're doing troop meetings or boothing, this could be a good um, and good way to have seating that um, is quick and easy. Less expensive because you can just get some mom jeans and cut off the legs or even old girl jeans. Um, you do need a little knowledge of basic sewing on that, but you know, our council offered uh, a sewing class and then YouTube, that's my go-to place for everything I wanna learn. Um, and then you could, this one has a belt, but I've seen them put like loops on the top so that it could be like a little purse to carry along. Okay, and now I'm going to show you guys how to make one. This is going so fast, I can't believe this. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you guys how to make a sit-upon using a shopping bag. So I just have... A mixed bag. I'm sure you've seen a million of these through school fundraisers and this size would, could be appropriate for maybe your kinder, your daisy girls, um, but this is really just for demonstration purposes. Any size shopping bag, as long as it folds flat like this, what you can do is tape the edges. So I'm taping that bottom flap together and then I'm taping the side seams. You could run it the whole length of the sides. I'm just doing a short piece for time purposes because I thought this would be a lot longer. <laughs> and then I just stuff the inside with about 10 pieces of single page newspaper. You could do more just to get it really fluffed up because as soon as they sit on it, it will kind of con condense down. But you also want to secure the top layer here with um, a strip of duct tape. That way nothing pops out of it and then they can customize it to their liking with the stickers or maybe if this was a, a solid color they could write their name on the side of it. Um, but this could be any shopping bag. Dollar Tree usually has them or a mixed bag fundraisers if you want to get really fancy. And then um, I do have the ones that I secured. So we used this during cookie season. My girl had a sweatshirt in here for when she was cold, snack packed in there for when she needed to take a break. I do like this one because it has a handle so it's easy transporting. And then this fabric was from Joanne's polyfill inside and then just duct tape all around. So I did long strips along the edge and you can see it gets a little, well, maybe you can't see it on the video so much, but it does start to kind of turn upward where the strips got a little shorter. And then I wrapped this piece with a single piece all the way around, cut slits to allow for the handle to slide through it. And then I did another one to cover up that um, top white band because it just, it looked funny to me with just one white band of nothing with all this color on it. With the uh, this one that I made recently for my photo demonstration, it had the blue covering and I just took duct tape and covered that and then it also covered the edge where I was a little short on my um, cardboard round. So you do see it has a little bit of um, a seam there that's not so secure but my boy's just gonna use this to fold laundry in front of his dresser, so I don't need it to be very uh, dry or waterproof. But I think that adds another layer of um, symmetry to it, because then you don't see any of that blue at all. But you know, it's up to you and your budget of 
what you want to put into this, what your girls want to put into it, since it's their money that they're spending. And it does add up quickly, but I would say about $15 is what I invested to make this. And, you know, it could go a lot, a lot higher depending on how much tape you want to use. So, any questions from the group? <laughs> I'm going to add to the comment again. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, for those who for those who um, are considering the set of quants, well, it's breaking up a little. Which, juicy. Uh, booth was awesome. Was a really great idea but for camping. Am I? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? It's better now. <laughs> so, <laughs> for camping purposes, um, what we did was have the girls put their shoes inside of the bucket, so that they weren't leaving. They weren't taking them inside the tent to avoid the dirt. And then it also kept their shoes outside, but avoided them from getting wet. So that's mm -hmm. you know another tip for anybody who's thinking about them and, and the bucket ones. And you know then sitting sitting around the campfire, they're not on the floor, um, and then they're not taking chairs and fighting about who gets the chair. So <laughs> great idea with them. Yes. Yeah, I have not been camping yet, so my sit upon has only been to cookie booths and laundry folding. <laughs> Let me put my email address in the chat if anybody wants this um, slideshow presentation to share with your troop. I can forward it on to you. It is um, in Google, so if you have a Gmail account, it goes better, but I can probably convert it, I bet, if you don't have Gmail. If you if you convert it, I can also email everybody that registered. I could email the PowerPoint to them as well, Perfect. if you would like. Does anybody have any questions? You are so fantastic, Heather. I'm like talking a mile a minute though, so <laughs> I'm releasing you all. I'm not keeping you the whole hour. <laughs> no, it, it was perfect. You gave us three great ideas and I'm totally inspired <laughs> to make these with my true. Yeah, and your filling can be newspaper. I just find that it condenses more, but it's a good uh, low cost resource, you know, that you can acquire. Lydia, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm just wondering if you guys know the best place to buy the buckets at. <clears throat> so I acquired Lowe's and Home Depot have them. They're usually at the end caps of the aisles. Um, but like Josie said, if you write a letter to Lowe's, they may be willing to donate uh, to your troop. Or if you get in contact with your school cafeteria manager, they may be able to put some aside if they have some from food preparation during the week. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. 